Hi there, I'm William Morgan, and I'm one of the creators of Linkerd. Welcome to the KubeCon EU 2021 Overview and State of Linkerd Talk. I'll be joined by Linkerd contributor Mate David. He will present the second part of the talk with the current state of the project, and I will be providing the overview. So what is Linkerd? It is a service mesh. If you don't know what a service mesh is, I will give you a very brief definition in the next slide. Um, but suffice it to say that Linkerd is a very unique kind of service mesh. For one, it is very focused on being as light and as fast and as simple as possible uh, for Kubernetes environments. Linkerd has been in production for over four years. We have a very healthy and active uh, community centered around the Slack channel. And we have uh, lots and lots of GitHub stars, so thank you. Please give us more. Uh, uh, over 200 contributors. We've publicly committed to open governance, and of course, we're hosted by the CNCF. Uh, we've proposed Linkerd for graduation, so hopefully we'll hear some good news in that regard pretty soon. And I'll also add that by watching this talk, you are now also a member of the Linkerd community, and you have just as much a right to run it, to talk about it, and to participate as I do. It's a community project, and you are now part of the community. Welcome. So what does Linkerd do? Like any service mesh, we categorize its features into three buckets. There's a set of features around observability, things like golden metrics and service topologies and distributed tracing. There's a set of features around reliability, things like load balancing and traffic shifting and retries. And there's a set of features around security, mostly uh, built off of mutual TLS. And the interesting thing about Linkerd and any service mesh really is that we cannot be a complete solution to any of those categories. So Linkerd is not a complete observability solution. You still have to instrument your application. It's not a complete reliability solution. Your application has to handle all sorts of failures that Linkerd cannot protect against. And it's certainly not a complete security solution. But the set of features that Linkerd can give you sit at the platform layer and they belong as part of the platform. And so what the service mesh gives you is the ability to get those features at the platform layer uh, without having to rely on developers to implement them in their application. So that's good for you because it means you have control over your destiny. And it's good for the developers because it means that they can focus on writing business logic and not on having to implement things like mutual TLS and certificate rotation, which are difficult and probably not where you want to develop your expertise. So how is Linkerd designed? In short, less is more. Very powerful statement. So if you have a functioning Kubernetes application and you install Linkerd, the application should continue functioning uh, with some minor asterisks on that statement, but we can do that in the vast majority of cases. So zero config out of the box, you should be able to just add Linkerd to a system and not break anything. It's designed to be as light as possible. So introduce a bare minimum performance and resource cost especially when it comes to the latency introduced to your application, because that is a user-facing cost. And it's designed to be as simple as possible. And by simple, I mean operationally simple, which means you, the operator, should not have to waste your precious life energies worrying about the service mesh. You should be able to let it run and understand it and feel confident in it. And then finally, to the extent that uh, it's possible when we have security features, we try and enable those features out of the box and not to put them behind uh, barriers uh, involving configuration. So uh, Linkerd today has a control plane that's written in Go. It sits in a Kubernetes namespace. It's about 200 megs. Uh, and then it has a data plane uh, uh, built out of these uh, Rust micro proxies. I'll talk more about that in a few more slides that are extremely fast and extremely light. Linkerd has a long history. It was originally actually a JVM application and I wrote a little bit about that history uh, in this article. So if you want some bedtime reading, just uh, cl click on the link in the slides or, or just search for that title. So uh, what does Linkerd look like when deployed? Well, it has a name, it has a control plane and a data plane. The control plane has a couple components, um, including one called identity, that's basically a certificate authority, one called destination, that's a service discovery endpoint, uh, and so on. And then in the data plane, like many sidecar based service meshes, Linkerd has a little proxy that gets injected into the same pod as the application does. And 
it uh, sits in there and has all TCP traffic transparently wired to go through that proxy. So the application is blissfully unaware that traffic is going through the proxy, and that is how the service mesh does its magic. Linkerd 2.10, uh, uh, which is the latest version, introduces this notion of extensions. So if you want additional functionality, you can add these opt-in extensions. There's one called, uh, which is demonstrated here, called the Viz extension, which is a metrics pipeline. It includes things like Prometheus and Grafana and a web dashboard that take all of the metrics uh, that the proxies instrument and turn them into a set of human consumable outputs. So if getting observability into your system without having to do any config is important to you, then you may install that uh, extension. If it's not, or if you have an additional mechanism for doing that, then you don't have to install it. So that's the control plane. On the data plane, we use a uh, proxy called simply Linkerd2-proxy. Linkerd is unique in a lot of ways. One of those ways is that this proxy is not Envoy. I wrote a long article about why that is. So if you want to dig more into this, just search for why Linkerd doesn't use Envoy or click on that link in the slides below. The short story is Rust, the choice of Rust, which is what we use to implement this proxy, allows us to avoid an entire class of memory vulnerabilities and CVEs that are endemic to C and C++ programs. Uh, Rust, of course, compiles a native code, so we can be as fast as the machine will let us be. Uh, and using Rust gives us access to a state-of-the-art network stack. So libraries like Tokyo and Hyper and Tower and the rest of the modern Rust asynchronous networking stack. I think this part of Linkerd, the Linkerd2 proxy, is probably the most advanced, technologically advanced, project in the entire CNCF landscape, but that's my uh, biased opinion. Um, and our philosophy here is that the proxy ultimately should be an implementation detail for a service mesh. So if you install Linkerd, you will have to learn how to operate Linkerd, but you should not have to also learn how to operate a complicated proxy. That's the goal. Okay, I mentioned a little bit about security. Linkerd is very security focused and we have a very strict philosophy that starts with number one, making sure that the foundations are secure, which is a big part of why Linkerd2 proxy is written in Rust. Number two, building on top of Kubernetes as much as possible. So rather than introducing new primitives, we use ones that are already there, things like service accounts. Uh, and then removing the barriers as much as possible. So, you know, the moment you install Linkerd and you mesh your application, all TCP communication is automatically put behind mutual TLS without you having to configure anything. Complexity is the enemy of security, that's our belief. And so we wanna reduce the configuration as much as possible, turn it all on by default, and basically don't make you have to work for security. Okay, I always have to talk about Linkerd versus Istio because Istio has a uh, lot of uh, marketing energy behind it. I think it comes down to what do you need in a service mesh? Istio is designed to handle a very large set of scenarios um, and has a very large feature set. The downside is that it is very complex to operate. Linkerd has a very different philosophy, which is we should give you the bare minimum to build a secure and reliable and flexible Kubernetes platform. So it's much easier to understand and operate, smaller, lighter, faster, but it is also very Kubernetes specific. So. If that doesn't work for you, then Linkerd will not be the right service mesh for you. Uh, here at KubeCon EU 2021, we actually have a uh, pretty amazing Linkerd turnout. So if you want to learn more, I encourage you to look at uh, to attend some of these talks. Uh, Oliver Gould, who is the uh, creator, the real creator of Linkerd, um, will be delivering a talk why the future of the cloud will be built on Rust on May 3rd. Uh, on uh, May 4th at Service MeshCon, we've got a whole set of end user talks uh, around scheduling COVID tests, doing experimentation, adding FIPS 140 uh, compliance, uh, and doing chaos testing. Uh, and on May 5th, uh, we've got some debugging, we've got some uh, compliance, the easy way talks, that sounds scary, and uh, seamless multi-cluster communication and observability. And then finally, if you really enjoy my voice, I'll be giving a keynote uh, about Linkerd versus COVID-19 on May 6th. 
So I encourage you to join those talks. With that said, I am now going to hand things over to uh, Linkerd contributor, Matei David. Thank you, William, and hello, everyone. My name is Matei, and today I'll be giving you a brief overview on Linkerd in 2021. More specifically, I'll be talking about uh, some previous releases that we've had. Um, I'll touch base on the roadmap, give you some community updates, and finally tell you how you can be involved. So before I start, I'm going to talk about myself for a little bit. Um, I've been a Linkerd contributor for over a year now, and like a lot of people in the community, I had my first contribution um, completely by accident. I stumbled upon Linkerd when I was looking for some projects to, uh, to contribute to. Uh, I attended my first meetup in March 2020. Uh, after I saw how inclusive and supportive the community is, I uh, kind of got over my anxiety uh, of contributing to open source. So in April 2020, I had my first merge PR, um, and it's sort of snowballed from there. Uh, I applied for a CNCF mentorship scheme, and in September 2020, delivered topology aware service routing uh, just in time for Linkerd 2.9. And since then, I've just been around the community, helping people out on Slack, uh, doing some bug fixing here and there and small improvements. Uh, in April 2021, I became a full-time contributor as a software engineer at Buoyant. Uh, so if my uh, my humbling story doesn't convince you that the community is awesome, hopefully the next slide will. <coughs> I'll be talking a bit about some, uh, some updates we've had in the community. So as Linkerd grows, so does its community. And I think in 2021, we saw a lot of updates that went a bit unnoticed um, in favor of the code base updates that I'll be talking about shortly. Uh, but first of all, we created a Linkerd steering committee. Uh, so we're in a very fast and dynamic space. Um, there are always new cloud native emerging trends um, and it's pretty hard to, to stay on top of everything. And aside from that, we, we have uh, adopters from large enterprises to, to very small and lean startups. So we wanted to have a way to, to get the end user involved in, in prioritization and, and shaping the direction of Linkerd and the steering committee does just that. Um, second, we rolled out a Linkerd community anchor program. Uh, a lot of people in our community do amazing things with Linkerd. They have amazing stories, uh, tales from production uh, where Linkerd helped them fix some bugs or, or find a bottleneck. Um, we have a lot of people who use Linkerd for research. Uh, so. Lots of cool stories. We want to help people uh, work on them and share them. Uh, so that's what the Community Anchor Program is all about. If you have an exciting story, please check it out. Um, we've opened up a new Discord server. We have a very active community on Slack, uh, but we also started trialing with Discord. And there are a couple of cool conversations going around there, a bit more implementation specific. So if that's your cup of tea, uh, please come and say hello. And finally, something I'm very excited about um, we have our graduation proposal officially submitted. It's still early days to talk about it, but I just wanted to kind of echo this out and let people know that it's been submitted and I'm super excited about it. Huge round of, of applause for, uh, for the whole team and community. All right, now let's get technical. Um, when I first joined as a contributor, the team had just released 2.8, uh, multi-cluster support, well, Linkerd multi-cluster, um, and also the idea of add-ons started floating. And that's important, I'm gonna come back to it later. Um, but Linkerd 2.9 extends zero config mutual TLS support to TCP connections. This was the banner feature allowing TCP traffic to be MTLS'd. Uh, and to do this, there actually were a couple of changes with the service discovery mechanism. Um, I won't be going into details now, uh, but a lot of work uh, went into 2.9 it was a huge release, happened in November, and it's very close to my heart because the um, CNCF mentorship schemes projects uh, were also delivered as part of this. Um, we had ARM support, which allows Linkerd to run anywhere on Raspberry Pis. I use it on my Pi clusters, for example. Uh, this was a GSOC project. We had multi-core proxy runtimes uh, to add throughput and concurrency, service topologies, uh, my project as part of CNCF LFX, to introduce routing preferences on per node basis uh, and bring your own Prometheus to make the control plane lighter. So if in 2.8, we started floating around the idea of an add-on, uh, in 2.9, it started taking shape. And then in 2.10, it came to fruition uh, because we delivered modularized control plane with extensions. Um, so we split the control plane up into multiple extensions to make it lighter, have less of an overhead and truly allow you to run Linkerd on any platform that you want 
as light as possible. Um, so with Linkerd 2.10, you can pick and mix what you want with your Linkerd distribution. Um, out of the box, the control plane uh, comes with the discovery service identity and uh, zero config MTLS. And then we have a Viz extension for the metric stack. So Prometheus, Grafana, Dashboard, uh, Linkerd Tap, which is an amazing tool. Uh, Jaeger extension for distributed tracing, and then the multi-cluster extension for those of you that want to do multi-cluster. Um, and on the topic of multi-cluster, in 2.10, we've extended uh, multi-cluster to TCP connections. So before, uh, Linkerd was more geared towards HTTP with multi-cluster, um, and in 2.10, that changed. Uh, we've also included opaque ports to proxy traffic without protocol detection. Um, so Linkerd used uh, protocol detection to determine if you're running gRPC or HTTP, and this aided in load balancing decisions and also in, in, LTL, in MTLS. Uh, but with opaque ports, we also added support for server speak first protocol, where doing MTLS is a bit trickier. Um, but yeah, there's a great blog post about this. Uh, so if you want to get a bit more in-depth knowledge, um, please, uh, please give that a read. But moving on. Where we are today in 2021, uh, our main objective for 2.11 is to bring configurable access policies to Linkerd. And this is something that I'm very excited about uh, because I've seen how excited the community is about it and the maintaining team is about it. Uh, and the community has been asking for authorization policies for, um, for some time now. And I'm happy to say that with 2.11, uh, we're bringing this in. So authorization policies bring flexible access control to meshed workloads. Um, I have two examples here. The first of all, we'll make it so that we can you can make it so that service owners uh, can require connections to be MTLS, uh, and then service owners can also limit which client can connect to their server. Uh, so to kind of have a visual aid for this, I have this very uh, simple diagram to the left where we have three pods, all of them running inside a mesh. Uh, and if you have two servers A and B, then you can uh, configure some policies on the server to say, okay, I do not want the client to connect. Uh, or I do not want the client to connect without MTLS. Um, so this gives you a lot of uh, flexibility and power over, over, over authorization. Um, so very excited about this. Uh, the roadmap, it's still in early days. Uh, so if you want to keep up to date, give us a star on GitHub and make sure to, to keep up with the issues there. And on the topic of GitHub, finally, the get involved, my favorite part of the presentation, uh, all of our development is on GitHub. Uh, we're active in the discussions, we're active in, in issues, uh, pull requests. So please come and have a look if you're curious or if you want to contribute, please feel free to do so. Uh, it's very easy to get set up. We have a thriving community in Slack and Discord. Uh, we make formal announcements using mailing lists. Uh, we have monthly uh, community meetups, uh, my favorite part of the month for sure. And then also for the party security audits. Um, most of all, I think what I want to say is that to be a contributor with Linkerd, uh, you do not really need to contribute code. Uh, we accept contributions in, in all forms and shapes. And actually, we encourage people to do some doc contributions to come and help out on Slack. Uh, there are a lot of people with good production experience that give great advice on Slack. There are a couple of people that I really look up to uh, that are daily active and, and helping people out. Uh, so yeah, we're a very friendly and, and welcoming community. Um, join us. Uh, it's tons of fun, and uh, we're, we're doing lots of good work. So that's it for me. I think it'll be time for Q&A. Um, yeah, I hope you're excited as I am uh, for Linkerd, and stay tuned for more updates to come in 2021. Thank you.